I've been binge watching gay films during the pandemic and I wanted to highlight the most erotically charged gay films. All of the movie titles are in the description if you miss them. Also links to watch the shows are in the description as well. Stay tuned. Yan is a coming-of-age drama that follows David, a 17-year-old with strict Russian Jewish parents. When David's grandfather downsizes to a smaller apartment, he moves in with him. There is a senior gay couple that lives in the building, and I love films that portray intergenerational gay friendships. Away from his father, who beats him, and his overbearing mother, he can explore his sexuality. In one scene, the manager of his grandfather's building says, thieves, adulterers, homosexuals, I take them all. Without them, we wouldn't have our minyan. Minyan refers to the quorum of 10 Jewish adults required for certain religious ceremonies. It is commentary on the role of the LGBT community in society. Without us, society would fall apart. The Chadwick Journals was born out of the DL Chronicles, which was created by black gay husbands DeAndre and Quincy. The Chadwick Journals follows the main character from the original series as he chronicles stories of men who are on the DL. The show is in its third season. Damien T. Raven, who plays Chadwick, won a Daytime Emmy in 2020 for his role. I watched the premiere of season two at a theater with a sold out crowd of fans. With the following that this series has, I am surprised that they have not received a deal from a TV network or a streaming service. You definitely should be following this project if you don't already. In The Blonde One, after moving into Juan's spare room in Buenos Aires, the blonde one, aka Gabrielle, notices Juan seems to be coming on to him despite being straight. It takes nearly a third of the film before Gabrielle gives in and the scene is shot with sensitivity, but it is highly erotic. Some people might think the first half of the film is slow moving or empty, but chemistry, body language, and the questioning gazes fill in the spaces to convey desire and emotion. The Blonde One is directed by gay director Marco Berger. I recently posted a video titled Gay Shows to Watch on Amazon and I featured two of his prior films. One of the people featured in the carnival is the actor that plays Gabrielle in The Blonde One, Gaston Ray. Overall, the film is evocative, sentimental, and effective. Wolfie, aka Max Remelt from Sense8, and the latest Matrix movie stars in Freefall, so I had to watch this film. Mark is a police officer with a baby on the way. Then he meets fellow policeman Kay, played by Max. This is a traditional love triangle. Mark and Kay are electric as the forbidden sides of the triangle. The love and passion for Kay and the fear and guilt in Mark's eyes are haunting as well as recognizable. His life is in a free fall. The movie won eight awards and the actor who played Mark was nominated for a German Film Award, which is the equivalent to the Academy Awards. This is a beautiful film that you should watch. Looking for Langston is one of the most difficult black gay films to find. Filmed in 1989, Isaac Julian's film is a poetic visual fantasy about black gay men in 1920s Harlem using archival footage, photographs, and gorgeous scripted scenes. The story is framed by voices reading from poetry and essays of Langston Hughes as well as others. Hughes was one of the first black Americans to make a living as a writer. He never came out as gay, but his friends knew that he was. Therefore, Looking for Langston is an important film that centers Hughes using his words and life experiences as a cultural metaphor for black gay men who suffer oppression for who they are and whom they desire. You need to see this film. It is so important. 
In The Phantom, Sergio is a trash collector in Lisbon, Portugal. His female co-worker is interested in dating him, but Sergio is interested in dating a male motorcyclist. When the man doesn't return his affection, it unleashes a dark impulse, sending him down a dangerous path of violence, depravity, and degradation. He starts to rummage through the man's trash at one point. In the end, he abandons all reason. I think the trash is a symbol of the kink world, or the direction that his life is going, or both. In the end, it is confidently orchestrated, aesthetically and sexually, and its impact is rather disturbing. This one does have violence that is sexual in nature, so if that is a trigger for you, do not watch this film. Like Cattle Towards Glow is an anthology series by American writer Dennis Cooper and French visual artist Zach Farley. The project plunges us through five separate films that follow young gays who attempt to resolve psychological issues through fetish play or violent impulses. Those impulses, repressed desires, and loneliness connects these stories. After watching this, I wanted to see why Cooper created this film because I know his books. Train Dreams is one of my favorite books by him. Dennis Cooper stated that he wanted to create a new kind of adult film, and the film represents the shapes of power that come into play at the precipice between sex and death. This is a purely art house adult film. Character and plot are beside the point. It asks the question, is sexuality a hiding place? It has violence that is sexual in nature, so if that is a trigger for you, do not watch this film. Party and Play was written by Samson McCormick and directed by Spencer Collins. I mentioned this creative duo in a previous film with their project, Love the One You're With. In this one, an, an obsessed music fan is pushed to his limit in this comedy thriller. Watch it for the eye candy. In El Mar, three friends in Mallorca, Spain, Francisca, Manuel, and Ram are traumatized by violence they witnessed during the Spanish Civil War in 1936. A decade later, they are reunited in a hospital that treats TB patients. Francisca is a nun helping the sick. Manuel is a virgin obsessed with religion. He is being treated and Ram, a thief and proud seductor of women, is sent to the hospital for treatment as well. Manuel knows he is gay but struggles between faith and desire. While Ram has been a sexually abused by his male boss, the film is tragic yet beautiful. Hopefully this is added to the Criterion collection and given the HD restoration it deserves. Pink Narcissus is a short film by James Bidgood, directed in 1971. It is a hallucinatory spiral of gay opulence featuring a man who is naked most of the film. Shot partly in Bidgood's New York apartment, the film explores homoerotic fantasies, including a bullfighter scene with a Tom of Finland-esque motorcyclist. The visual language is glitter, antique sculpture, and kitschy decor. His theatrical aesthetic influenced photographer David LaChapelle, as well as countless other gay artists. Strangely, Pink Narcissus, or Pink Narcissus, is Big Good's only short film, and he did not claim it until the 90s. Many people believed Andy Warhol filmed it. The best way to describe this film is strange and beautiful. Thanks for watching this video. Please follow me on Instagram at writer Vic Yates for more about my art and literary projects. Also in the comment section, let me know which movies you would add to this list, which movies you plan to watch, if you have seen 
any of these movies, and if you have seen any of them, what are your thoughts? If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel, like, and share this video. Until next time, have a lovely day. Besos. Mwah.